is much easier than forcing one and one half. Right? It's a much more constrained problem. And in fact, you can show that if you start with something, eigenvalue to the one, if you add one more zero pi, go from one to two, then you have lambda to the one half. You can actually show that. It's one of the exercises of the book. Okay? Is that, is that clear? So you can start with, with, with uh, filters that might not have derivatives. Exist. What you do is you put an additional zero there. And you can show that the corresponding operation in the matrix set side is that I can balance with one half. What if C is eight, right? Summation is not a okay. C prime double prime to the okay. k. So obviously you can generate this and write this, so C double prime of zero will be four and zero C double prime of zero. So if you want second derivative equal to zero, I mean not equal to zero. Second derivative exists. So even smoother. Then your M naught have to have eigenvalue equal to one four. Right? So you have one one half, one quarter. So the more the derivative exists, the more eigenvalue structurally that you want. Right? One, one half, one quarter, one eighth, and so on and so forth. That's the limit, okay? okay? Five by five, right? You cannot have yeah. one, one half, one quarter, one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth, and so on and so forth, right? We have five eigenvalue. So this means that I can have one up to one, one half, one quarter. One, one half, one quarter, one eighth, one sixteen. One and five the value of this matrix. One and five by five. And that's the smoothest choice you can make. And that's the case when you have one, the z inverse to the fifth part. The next 40, so tomorrow until uh, Saturday, Professor Draft will discuss in detail of you know, the basic building block. I'm giving you an overview of what's going on. Okay? So um, here's the website, my own group website. So if you need, if you want to see what I'm working on, you can actually go to the website here and, and take a look at it. And so after this part, I have another talk for about half an hour on topics that I'm doing research right now. So you see that I have about 10 different projects. I may be choosing three or four discussing about this project uh, somewhat in detail. And then so you can see, see a, fla a, a flavor of what I'm working on. And all those projects and demonstration videos and so forth, uh, presentation, papers to be on the website. Okay? Uh, a few words about UCSD. Some people have heard of UCSD before. Um, so I'm, let me try to motivate why do we need progression. And then there are two choices of transform. So, so far, we discussed wavelengths, right? And you can see that wavelength is a way to represent. It's a representation. So, so wavelength in the compression engine is appear as a processing block, right? It's a transformation block. So, we compare wavelength to DCT. DCT is also a simple side transform. It's also another way to represent the signal. So, we compare what are the trade-offs between different transformation for, for similar products. And then we'll, we'll talk about uh, you know, this in JPEG and MPEG, which is ECT based, and then we'll talk about web transform. And then at the end of the talk, I have a, a demonstration. Okay, using FileWave, which we use it today. And you see it on the image, what's going on. Okay. So compression. So what this slide tries to, to say is that over here you have your source, okay? This is a video source. And the source can be a combination of several different screens, right? And if you want to send this source losslessly, you need a very, very big pipe, right? A very high-density pipe. And, and then you can get your very, very good quality. 
or with no compression, you can have a smaller pipe, but then you can only display or compress a part of the image. So if you want to compress everything, compress and display the whole city, the whole video uh, scene, then you need somehow to take this video or this image, go to a compression engine we call C for compression, to you know eventually reduce a factor of 64 for them. Right, from very big size to very small size. Send it over to a, a, a narrow bandwidth, and then hit on the other side with the compress. Right? To get the image back. Now so so so, so there must be some way of designing C and D together, right? C and D have to work together to get a good good compression. So in this talk I'll discuss how to compress. So compression is a way to represent data spatially and also temporally. Okay, so frame coming in and so on. Here, so the next few slides, I'll discuss several examples of compression. So for example, you know, for Disney, Disney have a Disney cruise, right, in the ocean. And um, suppose Disney have a celebration in Disney World. This event. So, if they want to broadcast this live event over to the cruise, which is you know far away, they have a little compression, right? So they have to compress, and they have to send it to the satellite, and then the satellite will come down to the ship. Okay, so that's one example of using compression in uh, in, in war. Okay, you know. You have you know, fighting, right? So you need to be able to communicate, right? If this is a Pentagon, you will not connect it to five. You have that, right? The Pentagon. So the Pentagon will, will receive data from the, you know, from the, the, the fighting area, right? All the sensor transmit over here back to the Pentagon, and the Pentagon will discuss, will tell all this and what to do, and so on, right? So this all this data is. Not only data, but also images. What's going on? And you have to do it in real time. Uh, in gambling, go back, right? <laughs> this is one of the biggest, you know, a market a driving technology. Is that in the valley, right? It is one of the huge area where you want to be able to let the people here to bet on multiple race, right? They want to come in here and not only betting on one, but maybe ten. Okay? So you want to be able to, to see what's going on. You know, it's betting. That means that we have to be able to, to compress and code all the big video screen back to here and then show it, right? So that's one application of, of uh, using compression. So all, in all this application, what is the most expensive component in this system? Hmm? The channel. Okay? The compression engine, the box that you built, is cheap. Well, it cost you a million dollars. A million dollars is not, it's not cheap. It's, right? But over time, it's very cheap. Because renting, this is, they charge you, right? Make a bit for, for dollars. So, the compression box that you buy is a one time cost. It's a fixed cost. The cost, the heavier cost, is in this everyday use, right? You use it every day. The box can last you for several years. But the more bit that you send, the more cost you have to accumulate. So this is much, much more costly compared to the compression engine that you build. Right. So if you can reduce the bandwidth